that old footage of former Destiny's Child singer Farrah Franklin has surfaced and is causing quite a stir. Farrah was part of a 2015 reality show that never made it to TV called Last Chance, Girl Group. The show was about former members of girl groups, and the cast included Farrah, Kylie Williams of 3LW and the Cheetah Girls, Dee Woods of Danity Kane, and Melody Thornton of the Pussycat Dolls. In one clip, Farrah talked about Matthew and Beyonce. She said, Unfortunately, my manager happens to be Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles. Apparently, Farrah believes that Matthew Knowles is responsible for all the bad things that happened to her music career, including her exit from the girl group Destiny's Child. But that's not all of it, there's more. If you want to get all the juice, stick around with us because trust me when I say we are just getting started. During a brief conference call in the middle of a video countdown with TRL, Beyoncé said in the year 2000 that Destiny's child break with Vera Franklin was the result of her missing several gigs and promotional appearances. They revealed it wasn't a management decision but a group one. Vera, who was a member of Destiny's Child for only six months, says Beyoncé lied about the real reason for her departure. While she admits to not being kicked out, she says she was already out of the group when the promotional tours that Beyoncé mentioned in her MTV interview took place. She goes on to further say she's never missed a show, ever. Vera says she walked out of the group due to being mistreated by Matthew Knowles. Either way, somebody is definitely lying. Woody Houston to do something else. Okay. That's the last fight out of here? Yes, sir. You might have to go straight to the airport. Okay. I don't have no luggage. I'm, I'm rolling. Well, it's better for you to go home than not have luggage. No, it's not. It's not? Because where y'all coming out there? Well, somebody can send your luggage. But then I'm going to have to wait for four days before I get all my stuff. That's <laughs> Well, it's either that or you're going to probably do me. Kelly and Beyonce and I became friends. And when push came to shove, I was able to sing and dance, and uh, God just put me in the right place at the right time. That's fake. <laughs> the Joker, right? The, the, the like any good leader, Beyonce was ready to help the group leave their past behind and look to the future. I saw Latavia in the mall one day, but I mean, let's cut that over. Don't say her name. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. There's no more us. The group cemented their position as R&B royalty. If I were queen for a day, everything would be free. Everything would be free? You'd get kicked out, Rob. <laughs> but it wasn't Michelle that left the band, it was Farah who was feeling the pressures of a showbiz lifestyle. And in the footage you have just watched, you can clearly see some of that attitude trying to come out in Beyoncé. The Beyoncé of today is the utmost professional. People try to feud with her, but she never responds. While addressing the issue of Beyoncé's father ruining her career, Farrah said, Matthew Knowles. He propositioned me, invited me over to the hotel room to meet and speak with him. When asked, did Matthew try to sleep with you, Farrah? She replied, I haven't met too many people in my life that didn't like me. I'll just put it like that. Beyoncé said to me, she was like, well, if you don't want to talk to my dad, you don't have to talk to me either. She continued, and I was like, I don't have to deal with this shit. And she was like, well, you can get the fuck out. In another conversation, Farrah and Kylie Williams had a shady back and forth where Kylie dragged her by naming her credentials, saying, I've been in two multi-platinum successful groups and they were not disbanded. Farrah responded, and I've been in the biggest one and you're still the other. Kylie responded, I know, but you weren't in it. Farrah then said, I was in it, I sold 19 million albums off Say My Name. Kylie then responded, did you, I mean, implying that Farrah didn't actually sing or contribute anything to the group. In 2000, Farrah Franklin joined Destiny's Child after members Latavia Robertson and Latoya Luckett were kicked out of the group. Six months later, she departed from the group. Born in May 1981, Farrah's career with Destiny's Child was short, and her relationship with the group definitely didn't end well. In 1999, she was hired as an extra for the music video Bills, Bills, Bills. Shortly after that, Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, who also served as the group's manager, invited her and singer Michelle Williams to join the group and replace Latavia Robertson and Latoya Luckett. Apart from having to deal with Beyonce's nagging father, Fair also said that Knowles and his team were worried about Destiny's Child's public image after three members of the band left in just six months, which is why they made her look like a quitter to cover everything up. Back in 2015, Farrah Franklin was interviewed by DJ Vlad and talked about the previously mentioned incident again, emphasizing that she never missed a show and that the group was not honest with people to give themselves more time to clear the air. She also dug deeper into the reason for her departure. The singer confessed that she joined the group in a hotel in Seattle after being very, very, very sick and nobody but Michelle Williams showed concern about it. Farrah said that although her doctor advised her to rest for two weeks, she did her job with no complaints. Unfortunately, she was getting kicked and punched around. During a group conversation at the Seattle hotel, she felt as if everyone was ganging up on her, and she was already tired and dehydrated. 
Fair added, unlike, okay, I'm not coming back to do this. And so, I walked out of the room. I'm like, I'm not about to let all you guys just jump on me and gang up on me. After that, nobody from the group contacted her to try to solve the problems or anything. Three days later, it was Williams, who supposedly didn't know that Farah was no longer a member of Destiny's Child, who called her from the airport. Farah explained that Williams was checking whether or not she would join her and the rest of the group for their trip to Australia. She said that even if she wanted to, she wouldn't have made it on time. After Farah Franklin left Destiny's Child, she embarked on a solo music career. Apart from that, she has worked as an actress in a few projects, including All of Us, The Preacher's Family, and Rated ATL. Unfortunately, she has made headlines for the wrong reasons. In 2011, she was arrested in Los Angeles for disorderly conduct, but she later claimed that she was the victim of racial profiling. Three years later, in July 2014, Farah was arrested again for disorderly conduct in Conway, South Carolina. She was reportedly partying with NFL players Ricky Sapp and Daquan Bowers on the night of the arrest. But to this day, Farah still believes her fate could have been different if she had received better treatment from Beyonce and her father, Matthew. You see, Beyonce will always be known as the breakout star of Destiny's Child. But at one time, she was lauded as a diva and one who hogged the spotlight, causing tension between her group members. Those rumors have been long gone and proven to be untrue or maybe true, but it did hurt the singer to lose two of her closest friends who started the group with her. After several group member changes, Beyonce publicly spoke about being content with Destiny's Child being a trio. Fans of the group will never forget when Latavia Robertson and Latoya Luckett, the two original members of Destiny's Child, alleged they were fired and replaced by Michelle Williams and Farrah Franklin after they complained about managing management and money. They eventually sued Beyonce and Kelly Rowland, as well as their former manager Matthew Knowles. The suit was settled out of court. Losing her group members was difficult, but for Beyonce, it was more than just about the music. She grew up with both Robertson and Luckett and went through a depression amid the media drama and lawsuit. We knew each other for so many years, we grew up together, we were all sisters, we completed each other and it wasn't losing a business partner or a group member, it was losing a best friend, she explained in an interview once. Two best friends and it hurt very, very, very bad. It's so sad and so unfortunate that all of those years and it happened like that. More trouble and bad press would follow when Farah was kicked out of the group for missing performances and promotional events, or should we say, allegedly. The group remained a trio with Williams and promised it would be DC3 going forward. Destiny's Child has definitely been through a lot as far as our members. But, we are survivors, and the group is now at its best. There's no need to add another member, we're Charlie's Angels now. She joked to Entertainment Tonight in reference to the group having the lead single from the Charlie's Angels soundtrack. Independent Women was the group's first single and first hit as a trip. They lavished on it, coining themselves as the singing version of Charlie's Angels. The song was written and co-produced by Beyoncé and is an anthem of women's empowerment and independence. Released in August 2000, it marked the first number one single for Destiny's Child as a trio. Independent Women held the number one spot on the US Billboard Hot 100 chart for 11 consecutive weeks. Prior to the song's official release, the group were already touring with Christina Aguilera to sold-out arenas around the country. The tour aided in the promotion of the single. Billboard eventually listed the song at number 77 on their list of 100 greatest girl group songs of all time. The song was nominated for Best Song Written for a Motion Picture, Television, or Other Visual Media at the 2001 Grammy Awards. Though they didn't win in that respective category, they did take home the award for their single Say My Name, which was recorded by the four original members of the group, Farrah included. Since the group's official disbandment in 2006, they have reunited several times, including at the 2013 Super Bowl halftime show and the 2018 Coachella Festival. There are constant reports of a reunion tour, but nothing has been confirmed. But in all this, Farah has always kept her distance from Beyoncé and her now-aging father. At the moment, Farah is focused on her music career. In May 2020, she released four versions of the song Push Up On Me. In your opinion, do you think Farah was deliberately mistreated and kicked out of the girl group? Let us know in the comments below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, bye!